I don't know how you passed the time during lockdown, but my family watched a lot of sports. And because leagues were so determined to play through the pandemic, sports essentially became a giant science experiment. Or as my Wall Street Journal colleague Andrew Beaton wrote, this was a year in which professional athletes were the world's biggest, tallest, strongest, fastest lab rats. We learned a lot from them. And now, with football season beginning just as the Delta variant is causing coronavirus cases to surge across the country, we're likely to learn even more about the virus as teams hit the field and fans pack into stadiums. So I definitely say the risk is up for everybody, but it's, it's just kind of our reality. To understand how athletes have been put in the unique position of being able to help us understand and cope with the virus, I called that WSJ sports reporter Andrew. He usually writes about athletes and championships and multi-million dollar contracts. But for the past year and a half, it's been this split between sports reporter and science reporter, because in order to cover sports smartly and responsibly, you had to cover the science. So what have we learned? Let's go all the way back to the beginning of the pandemic, when pro basketball players taught us that asymptomatic cases were common and were fueling the spread of COVID-19. Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ, and it is monster. As this CBS Sports HQ video shows, Days after NBA player Rudy Gobert touched microphones and mocked the league's safety protocols, he tested positive for COVID-19. Fans were sent home from games, and pro basketball went dark. It's just unbelievable, just not, not something you ever could have anticipated. After Gobert got sick, eight other teams were tested, and more than a dozen positive cases were discovered. He taught us that we should take the virus seriously, but we also learned something else from that, from the fallout of his positive test, right? Yeah, I think he obviously became the face of it because of his role. But one of the interesting learnings that came from these NBA players was many of the NBA players who tested positive never felt sick at all. First of all, how are you feeling this morning? Um, I'm, I'm fine. It was a moment when many of us learned the term asymptomatic. Remember, all of this happened at a time when NBA players had privileged access to tests that the rest of us couldn't seem to get. Soon after professional sports leagues suspended their seasons, they began devising ways to play. And some leagues, like the NBA, went as far as to isolate teams on a campus, better known as the bubble. Basketball players literally moved to Disney World to finish their season. The bubble works, right? The bubble totally worked. And it showed that, you know, if you're going to take the most extreme measures and precautions possible, you could prevent this. The bubble concept might be impossible for other industries to replicate, since many of us living in the real world can't afford to move away from our families and work from Disney World. But the more than 100,000 tests that were conducted by the NBA helped inform all of us outside the bubble. The bubble data helped researchers figure out, among other things, that if someone recovered clinically from COVID-19 yet continued to test positive, they weren't a risk to others. 10 days in isolation was enough to prevent transmission. Then came football season, and the NFL quickly realized that the way many of us were defining being in high-risk contact with an infected person was wrong. How? The NFL didn't make players move to a bubble, but it administered nearly a million tests on its 32 teams in 32 different communities over the course of its season. Those 32 populations, they had data in so many different ways, the contact tracing, the testing, the genetic sequencing. And so where else in the world could you really generate that type of information on such a broad scale, well, that didn't really exist. Back then, a lot of people thought that being in close contact with an infected person meant being within six feet of them for more than 15 minutes. The NFL's data quickly showed that that conventional wisdom was inaccurate and that the virus was still being transmitted beyond those parameters. The league made changes to its protocols and its findings were laid out in a paper published by the CDC. And since the NFL was doing so much testing, it also set out to find a rapid and accurate COVID test. We're talking faster than that standard PCR test and more accurate than the widely used rapid antigen test. And that was hugely valuable for a league where, you know, if you're going inside the building, you might be spreading it to teammates inside the locker room. Time is money in the NFL. Time is definitely money in the NFL. And being able to have a test that was both fast and accurate was kind of the dream scenario. Together with two biotech companies, the NFL studied a rapid point of care test that delivered on the spot results in 30 minutes. And they found that the results matched the standard PCR tests that the players were already taking. According to BioReference, a company that runs the test, the NFL's work is now helping inform the cruise industry, school districts, sports and entertainment venues, and other employers.
And finally, there's heart research. At one point, when there were major concerns about how the virus impacted the heart, it was athletes from the WNBA, NHL, MLB, and beyond that underwent rigorous and expensive screening that helped us learn more. These are the types of things that you can't necessarily execute if you're an average person, but they provided a learning that would actually apply to an average person. All of that screening contributed to a study that showed encouraging results. Luckily, it found that long-term heart complications in non-severe COVID cases are unlikely, something all of us weekend warriors and amateur athletes could take comfort in. Now, with questions still swirling about breakthrough infections and the transmission of the Delta variant, we're likely to learn even more from sports as the pro football season kicks off. The NFL has all but mandated vaccines for players, and some venues are asking fans to show proof of vaccination too. We're entering this new strange stage of the pandemic where we know that the Delta variant is making things dangerous. We know vaccinations are making things safer, but at the same time, people are attempting to return to normal. And for a lot of people, normal means football and football crowds. Professional leagues like the NFL are continuing to test, research, and study the effects of COVID. As for the rest of us, we'll probably still be spending a lot of time at home, but at least we'll have something fun to watch on Monday nights. If you want to learn more about how scientists are turning to sports, check out the link below for more of Andrew's work. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe so you can join me as I report on more news that's having an impact on our lives. Go Broncos!